Qualcomm recently offered to acquire Vionier for $4.6 billion, which seems like an uncustomary bidding war with Magna. Could you share your thoughts on this deal? I don't think it is that unconventional, actually, especially in markets that are very active in M&A, like semiconductors and tech. It is actually not that unusual to have sort of a white knight to swoop in. Sometimes the management team orchestrates it, sometimes investors orchestrate it. But it is not unusual that if the deal has not been closed, you get somebody who comes in and tries to buy the company at a higher price. Um, I think that uh, from a shareholder perspective, the management team is doing the right thing by entertaining Qualcomm because Qualcomm produces a higher return. I think the wrong thing to do would have been to say, I will not take the higher amount of money. I will not generate a higher return for my investors because that is not good fiduciary sense, um, especially for investors who are exiting. And uh, so from my perspective, I think uh, well done, uh, to the management team to be able to attract Qualcomm over and to get a significantly better deal for their investors. Uh, those guys should get bonuses and should get promoted. Um, it is not about whether they kept their word or not, because at the end of the day, it's a transaction that is happening. And in the transaction, uh, the selling company always needs to optimize for its investors, uh, its existing investors. Um, and in this case, Qualcomm, if it pays more, the existing investors are better off. So it's the right thing to do. So Qualcomm's offer is an all-cash bid. Well, recently, Marvell Technology proposed to acquire Innovium in an all-stock deal. What are some pros and cons of the two payment methods? I have to sort of wear my teaching hat here because I have to talk about the theory of it. So in theory, when you buy someone with your stock, you are incentivizing them to work hard and to sort of raise the stock price. And for example, if you had a company and I were to buy that company for a hundred dollars, I, if I pay you uh, stock from my company, what it does is it makes you a shareholder, you get vested interest and uh, hopefully uh, over a couple of years, uh, both parties gain from the increased value that comes from a successful post merger integration and the price stock price should go up. So everybody wins. So that's the, that's the theory when somebody offers you for for you stock now let's talk about what is <laughs> what happens in reality so in reality and i'm going to like sort of assume that right now two companies do not have to think like one they they have to watch out for their interests um, somebody who's buying you with stock and not with cash despite cash being abundantly available is because they believe that the stock is overpriced so they are buying you for with an instrument, with a financial instrument, which is cheaper for them than cash. So that is a very good reason to do a full full stock deal and not put in any anything because you are thinking, hey, my stock price right now is $10. In reality, I think it is going to be eight. If I was to pay them $10 in cash, I will never get that back. But if they are going to buy for $10 and later on the stock goes down to eight, at least I still win. So that from a buyer's perspective, that's the most rational thing they can do. From a seller's perspective, so for example, I want to sell my foundry to you, then um, the only reason you should be doing um, a, a fully stock deal is if you think that your uh, buyer's uh, stock is undervalued. So you actually think that you're getting this thing for $10, but you actually think it's worth $12. So it's a classic, it's a classic uh, arbitrage problem and information problem that um, that kicks in. So my only advice for people who do want to do all stock deals, uh, both from a selling perspective and a and a buying perspective, is just make sure that you have a realistic understanding of where the stock is going to go, and uh, you would want to hedge your bets. And uh, so doing a hundred percent stock deal. Uh, unless until there is massively extenuating circumstances, um, is probably a very, very risky proposition for existing investors. Ideally, you need to have some cash in there to hedge against uh, this information gap. I mean, you don't know uh, the person that is, you don't have the same information as the management team 
of the company that is buying you. Um, and so you should always get some cash. Otherwise, you're too exposed. I mean, that's just look at the deals Google does or then every time they do a full cash purchase, it is mostly because they believe that the stock is undervalued and they don't want to use it to buy things. But things can change, right? 